And that's the last of my belongings, all packed and loaded up. I think so anyway, unless you stashed something away to remember me by. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. I've borrowed. Okay, fine. I've stolen your shirts and hoodies enough times that you're entitled to something of mine, I guess. So, what is it? Did you take some hair from my brush as an addition to that shrine in your bedroom closet dedicated to me? Because don't think you've kept that a secret. I wasn't going to say anything, but since I'm heading out soon, I should let you know that the ritual chanting was getting a little over the top. Oh, I see how it is. You're going to play mind games with me. I'm going to get to my new place, get everything unpacked and stored away, then in two weeks when I can't find something, I'll have to ask myself whether I just misplaced it or if it's something you decided to hold on to. All of that just to make sure I still have to stay in contact with you after I've made my escape. You think you're some kind of devious mastermind, but I'm on to you. Well, I've lived with you for, what, a year and a half now? If I didn't know how your mind worked at this point, I'd basically be hopeless, especially when you consider how close we've gotten during that time. So don't go thinking you can slip something like that past me, mister. <laughs> really, though, I don't think I'll be able to thank you enough for everything you've done for me. No, really. Stop saying that. I do need to thank you. And I will always owe you my gratitude for everything. I remember those first couple days after the fire. Almost broke, living out of a hotel room only for as long as my insurance would cover it. Spending my time picking through whatever possessions that weren't torched but were now completely soaked with water and chemicals from putting the fire out, all of it thrown into a storage unit that reeked of smoke. All of that on top of being downsized out of a job the week before, I felt like I had nothing left. I didn't know where I was going to go or what I was going to do. Then, you reached out. We were friends, sure, but we weren't that close. At least I wouldn't have thought so. But you just opened up your home to me. And you did everything you could to make it feel like my home too. You made me feel as if I wasn't just some homeless girl couch surfing until things got better. And you never asked for anything in return either. Even when I got my new job and was in a position to start paying rent or something like that, you kept turning me down, kept telling me to put it towards something else so that I could get to a place where I wouldn't feel like I had to give you something anymore. And then, besides the financial stuff, there's everything else you've done for me. Helping me deal with insurance claims when I was in no headspace to deal with other people. Letting me cry on your shoulder when the stress of everything became way too much to bear. Finding better and better jobs for me to apply to. Surprising me on my birthday with replacements for a bunch of sentimental trinkets I thought I'd never see again. I can't. There's no way I'll ever be able to... Yeah, I will happily take one more big bear hug from you as I'm on my way out the door. <laughs> Shut up. Neither of us owns a step stool. You're gonna have to crutch for this one, you big dork. You are the best friend I've ever had. No, you're... <laughs> you're the best friend I could possibly imagine. I was so, so devastated and despondent the day you reached out to me that... That if you hadn't, I don't know if I'd even be here today. You saved me. 
and the sheer patience and kindness and generosity you've shown me might even have led me towards a better life than I would have had if that fire had never happened. I owe you everything. I love- uh. It- it's about time I get going, I think. Uh, as much as I would want to stay here with you forever, I mean, up for the rest of the day, I have a lot to do to get settled in at my new place. Um, here are your keys. I will, uh, call you once I'm settled in and we can figure out some kind of schedule where we can still hang out. Obviously, not as much as before, which really, really sucks, but yeah, I'll, I'll see you later. I'm gonna miss you too. Goodbye. Hey, yeah, I, uh, I wouldn't say I forgot something, more like almost missed it. My last opportunity to do this. <laughs> Hold on, you just kissed me back. I didn't expect this wasn't what I- you want this too? Um, well then, let's, um, take this back inside. Now, where were we? <gasps> oh my god. I forgot just how strong you are. <sighs> Sweeping me off my feet like that. With my legs wrapped around your waist as you hold my body tight against yours. It's enough to give a girl ideas. And based on what I feel pressing up against my hips, you're getting a few yourself. That's good. I need to know, though. Why didn't you say or do anything like this earlier? I know I'm one to talk, but still, what's your excuse? What, am I suddenly too much of a burden for you to bear if I'm not grinding against you? Ugh, fine, but this better be good. Okay, so out with it. Why did you wait until I acted to do anything? Oh, yeah, I completely understand. I was dependent on you for, well, at the beginning, pretty much everything. I see why you'd be hesitant to try and pursue me under those circumstances. You didn't want me to feel like 
I had to accept any advances because I owed you anything or that if I refused it, you might kick me out. To be honest, I was thinking along the same lines. I didn't want to approach you because I was worried you'd see me as just in it for what you were giving me, like my affection was some sort of incentive to keep providing for me or something. But that doesn't explain why you weren't going to make your move now that I'm back on my feet. Even when I was okay money-wise before, I was still living with you. Now, though, we're on equal terms. No more weird power dynamics holding us back. Just us, ready to give ourselves to each other. Why did you hesitate? Oh god, no. I get why you didn't want to press the issue, but I know you so much better than that. You are so much better than that. At the same time, the fact that you still were worried about me seeing what you've done for me as something to hold over my head is so, so sweet and selfless. You were ready to give up your opportunity to find happiness with me because you couldn't be sure that I was going to reciprocate without any reservations. But I am. <laughs> I thought I couldn't love you any more than I already did. But you just keep finding new ways to win me over. Yeah, that wasn't a slip up. I said I love you. What are you going to do about it? You love me too, huh? Then, I can't think of any reason why we can't pick up where we left off. <laughs> oh my god. You can't just pick me up and carry me off wherever you want now just because you know I want your hands on me. I mean, I can't really stop you, but the point stands... <laughs> <laughs> the kitchen counter. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't daydreamed about this particular scenario more than a few times. Looks like you have too. But while I can actually look you in the eye, there's something I really need you to know. Okay, haha, ha, I'm short, yes. <laughs> I guess I left myself open to that one. But it's not the only time I'm going to leave myself open for you today. <laughs> but here's what's going to happen, babe. I have been patient for way too long to take things slowly and sweetly now that we're in each other's arms. We can be tender and sappy tomorrow. Today, I don't want to make love. I don't even just want to have sex. I want us to use each other and make all those naughty fantasies we've had about each other become reality in every room of this house. <laughs> you think you can handle that? Then why are my clothes still on? 